Real Country 1430 AM and 107.3 FM WRDN. I'm Brian Winnikins. And uh, joining us uh, this morning is Joe Prusaki. He is uh, with the uh, USDA's National Ag Statistics Service. Had a chance to talk with uh, Joe during the NAFB convention in Kansas City. And uh, thank you to our broadcast sponsors, including Ashley Gaussman, our BASF representative in Northwest Wisconsin, Mike Jen Seeds, Matt Carls, your representative in Northwest Wisconsin, Wisconsin Farm Bureau Federation, Annabas Silo, and Wisconsin Corn Growers. And Joe, uh, every the, this year has been an interesting year for NAS and the crop reports. And there are some every time these crop reports come out, they they always say, "What were these guys? What are they seeing? Or what? Where did they come up with these numbers?" And I think what a lot of people don't realize is is NAS is just reporting the numbers that the farmers are telling them. Yeah, so that's that that's exactly what it is, Brian. Uh, if you think about it, you know we do when you talk about these crop reports starting in August, September, October, November, we do two surveys. One is a farmer-based survey. We ask the farmers, what is the yield? What do you expect your yield to be for, you know, corn, soybeans, and such? And then we also do what's called an objective yield survey where we lay out plots in corn, beal, corn, soybean, cotton, you know, but for you guys it's corn and soybeans. And this is what we see. You know, it's like, okay, these are what the data are telling us. Can people agree, disagree? Sure. Usually when you get a lot of you know, questions, things come up in the media, it's when you have expectations. Because there was an expectation early in the season that, hey, everything is in late, it's cold, it's wet, we're putting in corn and mud. You know, it's impossible. It's impossible to have a crop. Well... I mean, September turned off pretty warm, at least in most part of the country. And and you can see we, we came down a little bit on the corn, corn yields. And acreage we adjusted downward. Uh, but, again, what are farmers saying now? What are they saying when they're running their combines through the field? Is it as bad as they thought, about what they thought, or better than they thought? That's a question, you know, that has to be asked. With There's a lot of folks that would say okay that's fine but then you have these big massive adjustments down the road where where does that come from are those numbers final numbers that because you get reports you ask the elevators or, or how to, how what makes an adjustment okay so when we ask, when you talk about what makes an adjustment so when nas had let's just talk corn okay so in march we do what's called the intentions report or protect per, intentions report or perspective plantings. We ask farmers, what do you intend to plant? So that gives us an idea of what's going on. Then we come back in June and say, okay, what did you plant? All right, so there's, there could be an adjustment there because what you intended to plant versus what you actually planted. And a lot of farmers have that kind of worked out, but then there's some that change their mind. And then we come along then in August, that's when we first do our first yield survey. But then the FSA data is starting to be finalized. So we have FSA data, and then we have you know, we have satellite information and stuff. We use a lot of information. And so we did some adjustments to the acreage then after the June survey, because one, in June, there was still a lot of corn that still had to be planted. So we re-interviewed farmers, so we adjusted acreage there. Maybe people expected us to change more than we did, but we didn't. And then when FSA came out with their numbers, it showed, you know, so many acres. And then we adjusted acres again in, uh, in October based on that. Now, is it to the level that people thought? I don't think so. But again, we did make adjustments. Are they huge percentage-wise? No, but acreage-wise, yes, it's maybe 100,000 acres, you know. It's a lot of acres. But percentage-wise, as you know, when you're talking 90 million acres of corn, I mean, it's pretty small what are some of the things that NAS does when you do these surveys and all that to, to make sure that the way the surveys are being done and the way that information is coming and how it's being interpreted it's being interpreted correctly because these reports supply demand reports or all any of these reports come out they directly affect the markets which directly affect the farmers so what are some of the things that NAS tries to do to make sure that this information that's going to be released is all done, I guess, for lack of a better word, on a statistically significant manner. Wait, so let's 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 talk through that. So, when our 
data collectors you know, do telephone calls. We do have coaches that do listen to the calls. And are they the questions being asked consistently from farmer to farmer? Because you want to have the same process that's repeatable over and over. So that's one thing. We do quality assurance on the data collection side. Once the data are collected, we go through at what's called edit processes where you you look for extreme outliers in data. You know, does is this does this make sense? I mean, did somebody enter in a data cell incorrectly? Like, you know, maybe, you know, a corn yield of 600 bushels to the acre. Okay. All right. It, it maybe they misinterpreted the question and maybe they had a small acreage and maybe they only had expected 600 bushels so you have to go through that so we look at those you know we go through quite a bit of analysis and as part as i don't know if you call it a double double review our regional offices so like say for wisconsin that's handled out of des moines wisconsin's part of um, the the des moines office Uh, one of the things that we do is that the regional offices they look at the data they make a recommendation for yield and then Washington makes a recommendation for yield at the same time and so that way you've got two different sets of eyes looking at the same data to see if it makes sense and then it's it's what do you call it I would say you know, you, you combined and you come up with an answer so there's a lot of processes or steps along the way to make sure this is the best possible number we can put out. Finally, Joe, a lot of producers that may not want to respond to the survey, they're concerned about privacy. But there's a lot that this this can't be one, it, 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 if I'm not mistaken, the survey is done anonymously. And, and two, if, if not, um, that by law, you can't, I can't say, so Joe, well, how did Jim's farm down the road. What did they say? You, you can't do that, right? Right, exactly. So every year, our employees, we have to go through what's called confidentiality recertification. And part of that is that as a statistical agency, the National Agricultural Statistics Service cannot release or reveal the identity of an individual's data. And then if you go one step further, me as an agent of that statistical agency, I am bound by law subject to fines and or imprisonment if I do violate that trust by revealing just what you say. This person, this is their acreage, this is their yield. If you look at the census of agriculture, if you ever look through the results of that, There will be D's throughout the publication, and that means we are suppressing information because of the potential or the possibility that an individual's identity may be revealed. Because if if you get down to the county level and you have one dominant producer of, say, sunflower, I mean, there's not too many sunflower producers, but, hey, if you knew that there was two producers in that county and there was... 2,000 acres of sunflower, and it's like, well, I know that's got to be pretty much all of that person down the roads. So we suppress that. So you cannot identify those individuals. And we go through great steps to do that. That is uh, Joe Prusaski. Uh, he is uh, with the National Ag Statistics Service. I remember 8 o'clock statistics class at UW Lacrosse. Ugh, it was always confusing then, but hopefully they're a little bit of insight of how they uh, come up with some of those numbers and all of those reports that we talk about uh, throughout the year. We're at the NAFB convention. I'm Brian Winnikins on WRDN.